Hello everybody and welcome to this live stream. Today we're gonna animate on a, a little character animation together with characters of different weights. Uh, yeah, can't, can't wait to get to that. Um, please allow me five minutes to make sure that everybody's working, uh, that everything is working and I have everything that I need here on my screen. Um, yeah, if there's anyone already watching, please let me know if the sound is okay. Um, if you can hear me fine, if I need to make the mic a little louder or something like that. Um, yeah, and then in just a few minutes, we can dive into doing a little character animation together. Really looking forward to that. Um, yeah. Hey, Jim, thank you. <laughs> All right. Hi there, Lilith. Nice to see you guys. <laughs> um, All right. I uh, just need to set a couple things up because I wanted to actually show you some things. And in just a couple minutes, we're going to start animating on a little character animation. I can really not talk and look at files at the same time. This is so... <laughs> uh, where is it? Yes, Alex Garcia, I'm, I'm going in just a second. Just need to uh, make sure that I have everything that I want to show to you on screen because uh, this time I actually have some, uh, some animation, some reference that we can study a little bit. Um, All right, um, hello, over hello everyone. Thank you for joining this live stream. Today, we're gonna do a little character animation uh, of two characters with very different weight. And um, yeah, to make sure we, we get this right, I wanted to talk to you a little bit first um, about what I think are the most important points to get weight right. Uh, especially in the little animation that I want to show you. Um, there is, um, generally we all have a good feeling towards identifying if weight in animation is done correctly because we see uh, heavy and light objects moving in everyday life. You know, we know that a car starts very slow and gets 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 faster we know that uh, we know how a pen would fall off a table we have this instinctive knowledge of weight um, but our instinct our but our instincts can also be wrong a little bit uh, because generally we associate um, uh, 
heavy with slow motions and quick with fast motions and there is something true to that but there are also a few traps in thinking like that and thinking that you know heavy is slow and um, quick is always fast because that's not always the case um, uh, w one important thing that we have to keep in mind is that if you have uh, a heavy object and a light object like a uh, bowling ball and a tennis ball if you let them fall to the ground they actually reach the ground at the exact same time um, and this is kind of going against our instincts a little bit isn't it um, the thing that makes light actually the biggest difference between light and heavy is um, how they deal with an impact and that's also a big part of the bouncing ball exercises that probably a lot of you already have done um, let me show you something real quick uh, I'm working on a video that's gonna um, explain all this a lot more condensed than I could ever do that in a live stream I just uh, wanted to go over some of the basics before we dive into the animation in this live stream. Uh, and I think one of the important, most important aspects of weight is the force that you need to put in to move something. For example, here we have a, paste, a piece of paper that's being flicked. And as you can see, the flick of the piece of paper is enough to send it flying across the screen. If we take something heavy like this book and I do the same exact finger flick you can see that it doesn't move. It doesn't make the book move. So the big thing that we have to keep in mind here is that um, you need a lot of energy to make heavy things moving and you, made, you, you only need very little energy to make small things, light things move quite a lot. And that is something that in uh, today's live stream I wanna see in action with two characters. Um, namely this orc-like character and more like a goblin character. Um, and the concept as it currently is in my head, who knows, maybe we decipher something different in the course of this live stream, is that the big heavy orc he has like a, a piece of meat and the small goblin wants it and uh, the small goblin kind of like uh, hammers with its, its fists against the, the orc um, but not really doing much because he's a light character and the orc is a heavy character and you know like with the book uh, it would need a lot of energy to move the heavy character uh, so the goblin is just hammering against him with his little fist and nothing is happening because he doesn't have the force to make the orc move or to really hurt the orc. Uh, but then the orc gets annoyed and he punches the, uh, the goblin out of the way. And he being this big strong character, he can put in the energy to push away the goblin character completely. Uh, and this is the little animation that I want to create with you. Um, it's going to be part of my animation class uh, that is currently running on the YouTube channel. Uh, as I said, there will also be a video going into more detail about weight um, and how weight works and how we can uh, use that in animation uh, to make animations that really have an impact. Um, yeah, so before we can uh, animate that, I've already done a little bit of character development. I was thinking about um, these two characters. I wanted to have an orc and a goblin, but I, I didn't have a specific idea yet how exactly they will look. Um, and I tried a couple things. Um, one of my favorite thing how to do character design is to just experiment with one element at a time. Here, um, I was trying different ears for the goblin character and then I was trying different noses for the goblin character. And by um, just picking, by just, um, yeah, focusing on one element at a time, 
you can really see all the the different possibilities um, one after the other. Lilith, Lilith says, I like the middle pair. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how realistic I want to go. I, I do kind of like it if they have like a little bit more muscle and, and arm, like you, you, you can still feel that there are um, bones and muscles underneath. But I also like a very graphic approach like this one where it's just a few simple lines. Um, so yeah, here I was trying different chins for the goblin and uh, then I tried a, a lot more uh, realistic approach, but I didn't, didn't quite like that. Um, yeah, and here I focused more on the orc, uh, especially with the placement of the, the head. Yeah, and this is where I'm, I'm currently at. I kind of do like this head with this uh, this big chin under it. I just I'm just not very sure how it's gonna look if the character is staring full frontal into the camera. Like that's kind of that's kind of awkward. I don't know. <laughs> um, so yeah, we still have to crack that uh, and how we want that to look. And then we can go on and animate these characters. Um, uh, I kind of do like it if there's like a little bit of a, like if it's not just Like if it's not just the curve, I think it's good to have like a little bit of a, a, a chest and a stomach area. So let's try to put that together real quick. Um, actually, I don't. I don't think this is that bad. The frontal version of it. I don't know. Um, And we also need to find a way how to make this reproducible. Like so far, I didn't draw the shapes that are under there. But um, if we go uh, into creating a quick model sheet, I, I think it would be very good if we know what shapes they are um, constructed from. So maybe we could try to always have the chin only come towards one side out of the silhouette. I think that would be that would be better than having it poke out at both sides that gives a very symmetric uh, kind of boring feeling. Um, I do kind of like this where it's only coming out towards one side. Um, yeah, and I do recommend making a little bit of a character exploration, even if you're just doing an animation test or something like that. Um, because it can really help you like once you, you, you start animating, it really makes animation faster because you don't have to do character design while, while animating. You already know how your character looks. Um, and it, it also saves you from uh, the experience of you animate and you animate and then you realize, ah, oh, the character would have been so much better if I made him look a little bit different. Um, so just spending like half an hour to, to try different character designs can be, uh, save you some disappointment. Um, I do kind of like this one. I do like it. I, I like that we have the chest area that the belly is coming out so much. I think this is going to be it. Um, now let's fetch a goblin. <laughs> um, 
and I think to to do keep it simple because I I want to do this in my uh, in my course as an exercise that beginners can follow along. So I I would recommend to keep it simple. You could also always, if you're just focusing on animation, make some really easy character designs like. Um, where you just have this blob and maybe the arms are just uh, are just those little hoses um, and you don't even bother with fingers and stuff like this um, that would be my recommendation if you are also new to drawing and you want to do 2d animation um, then it can always be a, a good idea to um, to just start very simple with very simple drawings so you can fully focus on stuff like timing uh, and and spacing and, and you know the actual animation things then um, yeah how how muscles work and stuff like this I have to say, now that I see it, I kind of, I kind of like it. <laughs> uh, I think we might go with that simplified style. Now, if you give him a ham to hold, how would that look? I do kind of like it this way. <laughs> okay, I, I I don't think we need a, a a whole model sheet for this one. I can just uh, uh, re reproduce that in the um, animation software. But if you went with something more um, refined, um, I would say if you if you end up with anything that is um, constructed out of multiple elements. I would always uh, uh, advise you to create a model sheet um, because otherwise your character will shift over time. And it's a bit too big. Uh, Lilith, I am drawing in Mischief. Uh, unfortunately, it's a discontinued uh, software. It was really cool because you could uh, just zoom in and out infinitely and go left and right infinitely. Um, and it kind of helped me overcome my fear of the page border because I felt like sometimes um, when I was scribbling in a... a in an actual notebook and I was doing something like this like a quick character design for something I would stop after the page is full because I would be like okay the page is full then maybe I do another page but then I would be like okay I, I have two pages full now <laughs> uh, and then I would stop and this really helped me to just keep going um, because there are no no borders there there are some there's some whiteboard software that works uh, uh, similar like this. I don't I don't know the name right now, but it's not made for drawing. So the good thing about Mischief was that the the drawing tools were also quite decent. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's just export this and take this as the model sheet. as rough as this is. All right. Okay. Now let's switch into the actual animation software. Uh, we will be using OpenToons today. I already have uh, some OpenToons tutorials on YouTube. Uh, 
So if you are completely new to that and you, you want to learn the basics, that will probably uh, be a better introduction. Um, all right, orc goblin uh, fight. I mean, it's not a real fight scene, but oh well. Uh, yeah, all the other options look fine. And there we are in Open Tunes, really cool, free open source animation software. Um, it's not the easiest to start learning animation with, depending on what you're doing. Um, but it's surprisingly quite powerful. All right, let's find the goblin model sheet that I just exported. And you can just drag and drop that in. Um, and we want to import it. We don't want to leave it at the original location, but we actually want to import it into the scene. Oh, why did it cut it? Did we accidentally zoom in while I was exporting it? Oh, come on. Sometimes it's really like live streaming, talking at the same time and still trying to do things that make sense. Yeah, selection, I wanna export this selection. All right, so I get my folder here and I drag and drop my model sheet, import it. Okay, why is it cutting it? Uh, okay, it's for some reason cutting into it. All right, then we just redraw our our model. It's not that complicated anyway. Um, personally, I prefer to work in uh, vector layers because in vector layers we have more control over the brush strokes. We can take the brush tool. For the simplified style, I think I would like to have thicker, thicker lines. Yeah, something like that. It's maybe a bit too much. That's good. And um, yeah, we're gonna make our model sheet layer. Um, that should be a layer that we can always put underneath our drawings to make sure that we keep the proportions and the size One big decision that we have to make if is if the the meat drumstick that he is holding in his hand, if that should be on in the left hand or in the right hand. Um, I mean, if he's right-handed, as most people are, um, this is also the hand that he will hit the goblin with. Um, and this is actually more important than you might think. You might think like, okay, who cares about if a animation character is right-handed or left-handed? The thing is, if you're constantly switching, um, if you're constantly switching, that's gonna look weird. Like it's gonna give the scene a weird feeling because uh, yeah, real people do not behave like that. We have one hand that we prefer using. And if your animated character doesn't have that, then it's it, it makes it less real in a way. Yep, 
yeah, keeping some of that off symmetry. If we do have a right-handed orc, um, This would be like his, this would be his right hand. So it does make sense that he's holding the drumstick there. Hmm. I wonder if he could make a different kind of simplified arm. something like that maybe still simple yeah it might make sense oh I forgot my water uh, I set it right outside of the room I'm gonna get my water real quick just a second <clears throat> Okay. I wonder if you should have a bottom if we should just artificially cut off the the bodies like here I think that could be an interesting look if we have them end here and it's just part of the style Yeah, now here's some great things about why we should work in Vector. With the control point editor, we can now go in and make some lines longer. To the point where we actually want them to go. Uh, like here, make those two connect down here. All right, and here was a line that wasn't so pretty. So that's the cool thing about vector. You can't do that with bitmap strokes. Hi, Lulu. Nice to see you. So uh, next we're going to bring in, bring in our goblin character and for that uh, I think we also take a very simplified version, something like that. Yeah, that nose was also good. Yeah, I think we're going to we're going to take him pretty much like he is here. Could make him a bit smaller like that. Yeah, I think that's nice. And maybe even his facial features are smaller than the one of the orc.
Yeah, now for the hands. Um, so we also might not go with the bobble hand here because he already has just those string arms. So let's do these kind of adventure time hose arms. Let's take the, those. Uh, Lilith, the um, technology behind it is called vector. Uh, vector graphics is where you have, um, instead of a pixel grid, like if you make a pixel layer here, um, and before we set the resolution of our scene to a, th a thousand nine hundred to a thousand nine hundred twenty times a thousand eighty pixel, and if you do anything in a pixel grid, it's filling those pixels with a color value. And in a vector software or in a vector layer, in OpenTunes, you can do both. You can have raster, raster levels, which are their bitmap levels, and you can have vector. Um, yeah, Lulu, it's OpenTunes. Uh, and you can have uh, vector layers. And the difference is that in bitmap layers, you paint in this bitmap grid and it's filling the pixels with color values. You can have cooler brushes if you wanna emulate like charcoal or uh, pencil drawings and you wanna have a texture to the brush, then bitmap is really good for that. Uh, with the downside that, you know, it's just filling color values into this grid. And in bitmap strokes, it's just a coordinate system um, that the computer is rendering at all kinds of different zoom levels. You can just zoom in and you see it will never get pixely because it, 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 it takes the coordinates of these points. Uh, to draw this line at any resolution. Um, and that's the cool thing about about bitmap, uh, about vector, sorry. And that you can uh, click on single lines and make them bigger and smaller. Um, for that reason, I, I really like them. Um, and if you have like clear outlines, like we're having right now, just black clean outlines, um, then vector is really a really good good way to go. There is more software, more animation software that works like this, like Toon Boom Harmony, uh, one of the leading industry softwares, is a lot like OpenTunes, by the way. Uh, it also has like both bitmap and vector brushes. And yeah, and that's why we can still work around a lot to find the perfect, the perfect shape. Maybe his, his tooth is going down. I think I had that in a couple of drawings in the model, in the character design phase. Let's see what I had. Oh yeah, in some drawings I gave him this 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 uh, buck teeth, bunny teeth going down. I think that would be cute. Maybe just a square. I do like to have them tilted a little, like you can see it in the ears, that they are not completely frontal facing the camera, but they are tilted a little bit towards each other. I think we should keep it that way, even in the, um, the animation where they're just staring <laughs> in the first pose, they, they don't interact with each other. But you know, they also shouldn't know that there's a camera there. They shouldn't be, um, they shouldn't be interacting with the camera because it shouldn't feel like they're, 
aware that there is a camera. Now with the fingers, we could go two ways. We could actually draw all the fingers and, and be like kind of realistic about it. Um, but I've also seen some cool styles where it was just they would just do something, some squiggly lines, and it, it actually doesn't look too bad. And here, especially the the vector, it is uh, turning that into some weird lines sometimes. Yeah, I think that's kind of cool to have it just as a squiggly. And also have the second arm just go down. Um, okay, how does the drumstick look? The, the meat that he has in the hand. It could also be something else if we can think about real quick. What is something that a, a goblin and an orc could fight? Um, about but I think food just makes sense, you know, it's just, just such a basic important need um, Maybe it has like a, a Spiral on it or something I do like to have a little bit of, of, of texture on it. It makes it more almost like three dimensional. Like, you know, if we put it here, it would just be flat. But because if you're putting it just uh, far the edge, like it's amazing how the brain immediately perceives to be volume there. Um, All right. Oh God, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> I wonder if we should be if we should go a little thinner with the brush stroke. Right now we're at three point six. Hmm. Can I make them smaller afterwards? Um, there's like this inflate tool, this pump tool with which you can make lines thicker and thinner. Also a great thing about Vector that you can do that afterwards. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure we're getting anywhere with that. I just go ahead and, and start with our animation. Okay, so we leave column one as it is. We're going to get uh, the exposure for this to just go over a couple of frames of the animation because we're going to put it always in the background to see if we are on the right track. We can uh, put the opacity a bit uh, lower for this layer. so we can comfortably draw on top of it. And now we need to think about our first pose. Um, there are different ways to do this. Uh, one thing that a lot of animators like to do is thumbnails. That's even before there's anything like a, uh, that could be even before we go into our animation software, we could just do this uh, on a piece of paper and think about, okay, what are the main poses for our animation? It 
and there obviously needs to be a start position. And I think in that start position, I just have one thing that I'm wondering about the character design. Let's jump back real quick. I just had an idea. How does it look? How would it look if the orc would only have one eye, if he was more like a cyclops? I just have to try this right now. Let's copy these lines, make a new drawing. have to try that real quick. I do kind of like that. I like the nose before. I I think we're going to stick with the one eye because it makes it even more simple. Um, maybe we could give him an eyebrow. See that even after I, ex I experimented with the character design, I still find new things. And this would be really sad if during the animation or after the animation is done, we're like, oh, this would have been better if he was a Cyclops. Um, you know, so so it's really good to fit these things in before. Let's give him eyebrows too. All right, so the second drawing is our reference. All right, so thumbnails. Um, so how do we want the whole situation to start? We have our orc and he has his food and is very happy about it. like that. And the other goblin, the other character, he could already already be eyeing this. Maybe he's in side view. And then right before, right when the Cyclops wants to bite into it, <laughs> ah, he's so happy. Right when he wants to bite into it. The goblin hits him. And I, it should probably be like back and forth. Like a real like. Dip, 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 dip. Um. A 
And maybe he does that for a while. I mean, the Cyclops doesn't really feel anything. He's just... It just slightly annoys him. And then maybe when the the uh, goblin realized, uh oh, I really has have pissed him off. He's still like, still has his his fist up, but he kind of wants to lower it. He's kind of like, ooh, I did something wrong. And then we have an anticipation. Where he just has the... The hand hovering over him. And his ears drop down and he's like... Mm. And there we go. And physically, this is the most interesting thing that happens now. That um, because the character has such a large mass, um, he can put all that momentum just from the way down, just from that short distance, into the goblin. And because the goblin has so little mass, it's going to take all of... It's going to take all of this momentum and it's going to be turned into force. And the force is enough to just smash the goblin to the ground. Um, if you would be hitting another, another Cyclops, the impact wouldn't be as strong because um, it, it would take a lot more energy to make another Cyclops move. But... Yeah, the, the energy that he puts in is so much that the the goblin is just smashed to the ground. And this is this moment is kind of the reason why I want to do this exercise. Actually, those two moments here. The goblin puts very little force. I mean, he might be hammering with all his his might. But it's not enough force to make or uh, to make the orc move or hurt him at all. But when the Cyclops does it, it's so much more force for the goblin to move the goblin. And, and I think this is one of the, the biggest things that um, light characters are very easily up to high speeds. It's very easy to toss light characters around, uh, but it's it's difficult to toss big characters around. And that is something that um, I really want to show with this exercise. Um, all right. Um, so, and then maybe to complete the loop, we have the character look at the the ham again, kind of like the first pose was. And now he could eat it, but you know, if you want to go full loop, uh, we can then have the the goblin pop up again, being like all groggy. And this would be the same drawing. He's so happy <laughs> about his meat stick. All right. 
and then the whole thing could start over again. Oh, see how I got bigger and bigger with my drawings? That's one of the reasons why we need a model sheet underneath, because if you just start making drawings, <laughs> you will you will change the appearance of your creatures. Um, okay, now that we have the thumbnailing done, uh, we can translate this in poses. Um, and because the style is so minimal, I think we can already... Um, Yeah, we, do, we don't need a scribble face. Like, if they would be more complex, I would say we would now create a scribble layer. And on the scribble layer, we would be like uh, planning the, the shapes and be like here, and then the muscles, they connect like that, and then here. Then we would have a, a, a layer where we just plan the the body mass like this um, that would be the next type of layer if you have a character that is constructed from shapes but since our character designs are so simple the layer we are creating now it will already be the cleanup layer Madhu asks, uh, does anyone know how much frames or drawings one should make to make a moving object? Um, well, it depends. Um, a lot of animation nowadays is done with 12 frames per second. Um, but yeah, how, how many frames you do depends on what timing you are going for. If you want something to be really slow, you might make a hundred drawings to, you know, move it very slowly across the screen. If you have something that goes really quick, then maybe it's just five or 10 frames for something that is just flying really quickly. Uh, and then you have other possibilities to make sure that it is seen. Um, for example, uh, do you know the Bugs Bunny run? When Bugs Bunny is doing, they're just like an, doing an anticipation and then they go through the image really quick. Then you don't need a lot of frames because, you know, Bugs Bunny can zip in just two or three frames from one, one side across the screen to the other. But because you had this anticipation first, um, we know that he's going to run and it's going to... Um, it warned the audience about a quick motion that, that comes next. So it depends. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, generally the answer is 12 frames per second will make your animation look fluent. And if you have something really fast, like running or fighting, you might go up to 24 frames per second to uh, define your motion even when it goes very quickly. Okay, now for the first drawing. What was the brush size? I forgot. <laughs> I guess mine is good. All right, so let's make sure we capture his adorable smile.
don't we want to do the drumstick? I like when it is a little bit smaller because it makes clear that like sharing is not an option. Um, if he would share it, he would lose like most of his meal. How could we put the other arm? Kind of like having it also up. Something about the shape here is too Oh, why is this now cutting in? Oh, we created a new Rasta level. I don't want that. I don't want a bitmap level. Let's get rid of that. Oh, this was the layer that I used to demonstrate what a bitmap layer is on. No, uh, we're gonna create a new uh, vector layer. We're gonna create a new vector layer here. And now we can make that frame. I think this one is turning out even better. Sometimes it can be so beneficial to draw the same thing multiple times. Um, it really, it really does give the brain uh, opportunity to tr to think into different directions, and I think that can turn out really well. All right. Uh, here's something that I do very often with my model sheets. I have the model sheet underneath and I have something where I absolutely want to, to have the exact volume. Then I would just trace it like that. And then I would put it where I actually want it to be. And this way I know it's, it's completely on model. It's, it's, Oh, let's actually do the swirl too. This way I know it's perfectly on model, but I can put it somewhere else. You shouldn't do that too often because it can make your drawing look stiff. But occasionally that's a really good a really good option. Maybe let's forget about the second arm. Uh, I think it's good how it is. <clears throat> Just clean up the line a little bit more. All right. Okay, I'm already maybe getting too much into detail. So I really want if I really wanted to change the animation, um, I could uh, just make another drawing. I think it's important that we just get through it once, so we can see how it all works together.
Okay, this line is going to be very important because it's going to keep the it's a uh, part of the style that our frame ends here. Um, so this shouldn't shift around too much. I do like though if it wiggles a little, gives it this hand drawn animation feel. Same with the outline. And because we're tracing from the model sheet, we avoid something that can happen when you trace from the previous um, frame. If you always trace from the previous frame, like you want this body to stay uh, the same size, and you always take the frame that you did before, it will still shift. Like over time, your, your form will grow or shrink or move to the sides or something like this. Um, because you will put in gradual changes that you don't notice between like one, two, three, four, five frames. But after you've drawn like a hundred frames, you will realize that your shapes become to shift. Um, so it can be, uh, it, it can make a lot of sense to trace from the model sheet and not from previous frames, um, unless there's something that you want to take from the previous frame. Yeah, that is correct, uh, uh, Jan Willem, Jan, Jan. Mm. Uh, your, your changes will add up over time, definitely. I do like the eyebrow to be like a little bit fuzzy, like to have those dents. That is quite fun. <laughs> oh, this is this is nice, I think. Now for the goblin, his first frame, I think we need to make very clear. We need to make very clear that he wants that uh that neat. So we have his line of action. This is a line that runs through the whole body. Make really clear, make really clear what he's drawn towards. I think at first his reaction should be kind of not so big, like he should just be greedily looking at it. And maybe he's happy too, because he hopes, he really hopes that he will get some. <laughs> Hi, David K. do like stuff like this. Uh, this is called an intention cue. If the character is kind of anticipating a movement that he would like to do, you know, he would just like to just grab this meat. Um, Uh, David K is asking, will you be reviewing this month's 11 second club? Uh, well, I haven't done that in a while, but yeah, I mean, eventually I would like to do that again. I'm, I'm not sure if I get around to do it this month, but yeah, we should t totally make that a thing again. I really enjoyed uh, uh, looking at the competition entries with you. 
Um, and there's always a ton to learn when we do that. Hmm, how do we deal with perspective here? Yeah, and here a more detailed model sheet would be great, uh, where we also know the um, how the characters look in like a side view. It's a bit too tall overall. Ah, there's a plus one for the 11 second club reviews. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, and you participated, David. That's great. Um, yeah, I will, I will, I will try. I also won it uh, because the other night um, I saw Soul, the new Pixar film, and uh, I really liked it. And I thought the animation of the uh, the entities in the uh, great before and the great beyond were really cool. These uh, they were just like abstract line drawings animated in 3D space. That was really interesting. And yeah, I thought Soul was a really, really uh, nice movie. I really enjoyed it. Okay, let's take the... the vector tools and change our lines a little bit. Maybe delete some lines that just put dense in it at uh, some points. All right, I think that's a great first pose. I think it's very clear what is going on. I like poses that have a drive. Like you can clearly see that he's gonna eat this. He's gonna be, he's so happy about it. <laughs> he's so looking forward into biting into his drumstick there. Make sure the eye lines match. Uh, you can clearly see that direction and you can clearly see that direction here coming in from the side. Um, yeah, it, it like in one picture, it already tells a story. It already tells what the characters want. Uh, and I think that's one of the the nicest ways to construct poses. Um, okay, uh, I'm gonna need, I need a short break. Uh, I'll be back in just a couple minutes. Um, and yeah, then we will continue with the rest of the poses. And I kinda wanna finish this today. I really wanna uh, get to animating this. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna, get something to drink, take a short break, and then we'll be right back in five minutes or so, maybe a little bit longer. No, I don't I have a little graphic for that.
Oh yeah, here we go. See you in a couple of minutes.
All right. Okay, and we are back. Now. Okay, we're going to continue with our little animation. We have the first pose right here. Now, let's see what's next. And for this, we have our handy dandy thumbnails that we did before. Oh, yeah, the uh, bigger creature, he wants to take a big bite and enjoy his food. And the small creature is going to protest. Now, here, I put an action and a reaction into the same thumbnail. Um, this is one of the most common beginner mistakes that a reaction and the reaction happen at the same time. That the orc is starting to take a bite and then immediately the goblin reacts and already hammers against the orc side. That would be an acting mistake because that's not how behavior usually works. Usually we need a little bit time to process things. So uh, it's going to be one step after the other. The orc is going to go down to take a bite, go like and the goblin will not react in this time. But after he sees that, he'll be like, oh, um, so that's one of the big mistakes that can be made in animation to animate the action and the reaction at the same time. Uh, good point. Uh, Jan asked that is also staging, right? One action at a time. So the audience knows where to look. Um, interestingly, I always heard, um, uh, oh, let me split up the drawing into two layers right now. Right now we have the orc and the goblin on one layer. We should, we should split them up. Um, personally, I heard uh, staging more to referring to the position on the screen. But um, yeah, I mean, the position on the screen can be selected in a way that it makes the animation more readable but so can the timing be. Um, so yeah, I, I would consider that a, 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 a thing to stage your animation in a way that it can be read. I haven't, I haven't thought about it, how much it applies to the, to the time level of an animation, but yeah, uh, it, it, it could be part of staging of just setting up your animation in a way that it is understandable. That That's cool. Um, I always, if I teach it, I would always have taught it under the, the timing aspect. But uh, yeah. Okay, so um, in that sense, uh, I like to do just one pose after the other. But now the orc is going to get a new post. We're going to draw that in here. And the goblin is just going to stay for a moment because he needs to pro uh, process what is going on. So I would like to redraw every single frame completely. We could copy some lines um, by using the select tool and choosing control C and control V to copy and paste. But I, I think I like it if the lines wobble around a bit. So I'm gonna draw everything, even the elements that are being still. Um, and because he's, he's bending down, I show this by compressing him a little bit to the side, having him go a little outwards. <laughs> or a lot. <laughs> we need to see how that how that looks. Turn 
to have like a visible, very visible change. not connecting as smooth as I wanted to. Maybe his mouth is a little smaller when it is actually open. can show a little bit of perspective through stretching the eye a little bit. Oh, he's so happy about it. Okay, let's get rid of the onion skin and just have flip back and forth. All right. Again, I'm going to take the shape of the drumstick at least sorter from the first drawing and we realize that we don't need that much of a line here can just get rid of that here and here cutting into it because as soon as we have the cut we can just select the line and delete it. All right. And again, I'm taking a shape that I really like from the previous drawing and copy it and move it up a little bit. We should have a complete drawing that we can. Yeah, it could be pushed even more. Like, as I said, if we would do the same drawing over again, it would probably be even better. But because I want to get done with this exercise at some point, <laughs> we just got to keep going. All right, now the goblin can react. Um, and now we're holding the orcs pose. And the 
goblin is reacting. Let's get the reference layer back. Now, I reversed the line of action in the previous frame. The line of action was like this. And um, whenever you do a flip of the line of action, it's perceived as a big change. Like you could have a smaller change where he's like maybe just leaning into it more than, you know, before the line of action was like this and the pose, the next pose, the line of action is just a little bit pushed. Um, you know what, maybe we do that. Um, just to see. Just to see what happens. Can I do something with his tongue? Hmm. just kind of panicking. Hmm. No, I think I want to have the big change of him going back, leaning back and preparing to hit. Oh, Natty23 just pointed out that the tooth changes from a square to a triangle. Yes. <laughs> and that's why we did our little model sheet underneath. Exactly. Um, I mean, I would like to make it a little thinner because it is now more of a side view. And fully frontal, but yeah, we committed to a square tooth in the uh, model sheet, so we need to keep that. That's a very good observation. <laughs> Now, maybe while he is, hmm, I think I do like him to take that one arm back like that because he's gonna like why he's hammering onto the guy's shoulder. Um, this is also, I think, what the other arm's gonna do. I just don't know exactly what to do with this arm yet. We could also raise it like that to have like a little bit of a symmetry pose. Um, hmm. It's very difficult to come up with something on the spot that isn't too cliche. Uh, Maybe he just has like a clawing, like, ah, this is mine. Or maybe more of a, this pose, this arm pose, just a little 
exaggerated. It's a little moved up. I don't know. We can see how it looks. Switch off our model sheet layer. Ah. <laughs> ah. Uh. 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 <laughs> yeah, I think we can leave it like that for now. Tweaking the arm a little bit. Okay. Um, and now it is already hammering onto the arm. Again, we need the model sheet underneath. Now he could lean even further back or I think it makes sense that he leans in like the size that he has in the model sheet now. We forgot his eyebrows in the previous one, which can contribute a lot to his expression. Hmm. Let's take the position of the facial features from the model sheet. And have him look really angry. Really displeased. Now, there are two ways we can play this. Um, like, it could just be a relatively small hit where the body takes, uh, uh, stays kind of still and it's like just like that and most of it is in the, uh, at the elbow. Or it could be really like with the whole body he's leaning into it. But I think I like it more if it is like a, um, like a small, tiny, fury little thing. like just this, this just swirls here just need to find the right swirl be a tiny bit back
his other arm has actually relaxed a little bit compared to the to the how dare you pose that we had before. Jan says, like, how a cat can go pat, pat, pat with their paw. Yeah, a little bit like that. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got so far. Level. <gasps> <laughs> I think you might grow a little too thick here, the side. Oh, and I undid the eyebrows in this frame. They should really be here. Maybe to have a bigger contrast, have them. Hmm. A little more inward here. I wonder if his facial expression could be even stronger in this first pose. like his tongue showing or maybe more like a drooling thing I feel like that, that fits more like to a goblin Now, the focus should really be on the fist. Um, that's why if we move the body, it's only like very, very minimal. Um, Could be that this is already too much happening in the body. We can also have like a little bit of a smear or uh, speed lines happening because I probably want this to go really fast. As much impact as this little guy can make. But then again, you know, also some things stay back because of 
the overlap and follow through, the ears are probably lagging behind while the rest of the body goes a little further. The tip of the ears stay where they were previously. Yeah, I think this could kind of work. I do like how his facial expressions wobble a little bit, but I guess the teeth grow a li little too big. And that drawing, we need to change that. Um, like in this style, we really can have things wobble a little bit. I think it only makes it more charming. In this case, doesn't look like much of a mistake. Um, but yeah, things shouldn't distract from the motion. Then that, that would be a problem if they distract. Hello, all in one X. All right. Hmm. So, to see the whole thing over again. Ha. Ha. Da da da. I think I already want to uh, construct a fourth, uh, a third drawing for the hit. Namely, when he's going back. Um, yeah. Um, Cause he'll be going back to that pose. Now, if we hit onion skin, we can see them both, both lines. Um, why not put them kind of in the middle? I do like to have a softer transition back, so it will give the actual impact a, uh, a little bit more force. Um, because it's, you know, before it was traveling the distance between the red and the green, without an in-between and now we have something like an in-between for it hmm. so it has in that direction it has less frames uh, and then it has in the other direction so starting the punch is um or going back from the punch is slower than doing the punch and i think that's the impression that i would like to have here. Not sure how much sense it makes for the facial features. But we can try. That is animation a lot of the times, trial and error. There are some things that can be known, but a lot of things you have to just see how they look and then go from there. Now we have the ears flop over a little bit on the way back. Mm. 
right, now we can have a look again. His eyebrows vanish. I really need to think about, uh, uh, not to forget the eyebrows. They had so much of his grumpy, grumpiness. From the face, he reminds me a little bit of Squidward. Something isn't right with the ears coming back here. They need to be a little bit thinner. But we have the contour editor tool for that. Let's have him do a second punch right after. Okay. Yeah, I think this coming along, along nicely. And of course, after like the first punch, our big dude has to react to it a little bit. So we're gonna put it in after the first punch, like here. Maybe he's going a little bit up. At least a little bit. didn't hit that line but that is no problem because we have the power of the contour editor tool up again <laughs> do we want to have a big change in the mouth that he's like closing it or maybe he's just making the mouth a little bit smaller. Uh, 
Um, something that I really do like with big mouths is if the inside of the mouth, like the, uh, the mouth, the position where the teeth are, if they stay kind of the same, because it has, you know, lips and stuff going over it. Um, and it just makes sense that the, the teeth, they're not that flexible to wander around as the rest of the faces. So let's have him move the meat out of the silhouette of the of the mouth. There we go. Hmm. I think the whole arm could drop a little bit. There we go. Um, in the chat, Madhu is asking, um, I only have a mouse for drawing the scene. Do you think I should buy a drawing tablet for drawing? Uh, as I don't think it would make any difference. Well, it does make a big difference. Like, I mean, there are artists that have done amazing things with the mouse, but the pen is just... Uh, it gives you so much more control over the lines. Um, I can definitely recommend getting a drawing tape tablet as soon as you can afford it. And there are even um, options that are not that expensive. Like uh, if if you look into the option from uh, from vendors that aren't Wacom, like Wacom is the big the big brand that everybody knows, but Nowadays, there are also very cool um, drawing tablets by a company called XP Pen or um, Huion, I think. Um, and they have some, some really great tablets um, that you can start with. And they're not too expensive. Um, but yeah, I, I would totally recommend um, to, to to upgrade as soon as you can, because that can really further your art a lot. Um, so if you're sure that you're like, you're drawing anyway, um, then looking into a, a graphics tablet is really recommended. Okay. Let's have a look. Ah, <gasps> book, 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 book. Yeah, I do like that. Maybe you can hit one more time even. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah. I think it's coming along quite nicely. All right, let's make another quick break. And then I think in the next 30 minutes, we should be done with the poses and can do the actual animation.
things. So, welcome back. We're gonna work a little more on our little animation. And uh, to get back into the mood, let's see what we have so far. Okay. Rock. <gasps> <laughs> All right. Um, now, of course, after being punched a few times, our uh, big orc needs to become very frustrated. And in the thumbnails, we also have that drawing right here. So we're gonna to go to the layer of our orc and make a new drawing. And this time I think I intentionally don't want a lot of movement in the body or no movement in the body at all because I really want the uh, facial expression to read and uh, to have that for the first time his eyebrow is going down and we want this to be really obvious and noticed This is really important. I want this, the corner of his mouth, the one corner to go really far down. And you know, in this, this case, his tooth moves up a lot. How it, it wouldn't naturally do it if it was in an actual skull. <laughs> but you know, it's animation. We can morph some things around. And yeah, and everything else should pretty much stay the same. Um, and while I'm tracing this, I can have a look in the chat. There were some questions there. Uh, how would you approach, uh, Tichi Wing asks, how would you approach on a rougher sketchy line in Toon Boom, like the pencil line in Photoshop or any other drawing softwares? Um, well, if you really want to emulate a pencil, if you say like, it, it's really important to me that the pencil has like a certain texture to it, a roughness, um, then um, there are some ways to do it in Harmony nowadays. And you know, in open tunes as well, you would choose the bitmap layer, obviously, and use what op options they have for their bitmap brushes. Um, but the software that does bitmap brushes the best, I think, is um, TV Paint. Because in TV Paint, it's, it's almost like in Photoshop. Uh, you can have a lot of, you can change a lot of settings. You can give your brushes a lot of different uh, properties and textures and um, they're also very beautiful presets already from the get-go. So um, TV Paint would be the software that I recommend if having texture in your brush is like your most important priority. Um, but yeah, I mean, I haven't tried the new versions of Harmony in a while, but they probably have um, the good options to do some really convincing pencil lines only in the the bitmap brushes and not in the vector brushes. You can fake it to an extent, like I have one 
brush in my harmony that I spent a lot of uh, time making the um, the texture for or experimenting with different texture. It's a pencil line, uh, vector pencil line. It's not like super convincing, but it has the right amount of roughness to it that I really liked. So, yeah, I think if you're gonna, if, if you wanted to fake in vector, you should probably use the pencil rather than the, the brush, because at least the vector brush that I, I know in Harmony, they just slap the texture under it and that doesn't look very convincing. While the um, vector pencil texture is at least following uh, the, the line, it's going outwards from the center, which feels a lot more organic than just having a, a rough texture slapped under it. So that's what I experiment, experimented a lot. Um, I wouldn't say it gives you like a realistic, believable pencil, but it gives you something. It gives you, I think a, it, it's more comparable with like an ink with a rough edge or something like that. That can be done with it very well. But yeah, pencil, pencil is difficult in a vector software. Um, personally, I'm drawn to vector styles with clear outlines. So if I can avoid it, I do not give my lines a texture um, if that fits to the style that I, I want to do. Oh yeah, and uh, maybe uh, one thing, you know, if you want pencils like in Photoshop, uh, Photoshop is actually not that bad nowadays um, with animation itself. It has a timeline now. Um, so you, you can do quite some animation in Photoshop. I wouldn't do like long scenes in Photoshop. I would try to break them up into shots like you shouldn't you shouldn't make your entire film in one an, uh, animation file anyway um, because the performance is uh, mixed in Photoshop it's sometimes it's really good sometimes it's not so good depending on how big your image is and what brushes you use and stuff like that but if Photoshop brushes is what you want then animating in Photoshop might be something that you want to look into <laughs> Just as uh, uh, asked, you, you use a horizontal timeline? Yeah, I kind of stuck with the, uh, um, with the presets in OpenTunes. Um, yeah, it's like an old school dope sheet. Um, personally, like to me, it kind of does make sense on a 16 to 9 monitor because I feel like at the sizes where I want the, the, the viewport to be my timeline was always really small. Like I, I had my timeline to about the size that I have here. And if I have a lot of layers, I don't know, somehow this was bothering me to have it just into a, like a, a small area here at the bottom. So I kind of do like giving it a little more space here. I don't know, but so far I've, I've gotten used to it and I kind of like it. All right, let's see how that looks now. <laughs> oh, wow. I really like the the change. Like here he looks he still looks so nice and then he goes to to that pose. That is so good. Mm. <laughs> ah. 
<clears throat> All right, next image. Now let's refer back to our thumbnails. Here again, I drew an action and a reaction in the same image. Again, this needs to be happening first and then the goblin needs to react. Really important. <laughs> Thank you, Chester, for your kind words. <laughs> Now we push the character to the left. Um, ah, thank you guys. <laughs> I'm happy you like my thumbnails. <laughs> Yeah, I always try to be very impressive with the thumbnails and even with my storyboards uh, to to like make eyes bigger, eyebrows very clear, mouth very wide open and stuff like this. Um, even if I do like a more realistic 3D animation, I like to, um, you know, go to the extreme first, even if I have to, to dial it down afterwards. Um, but I wanna, I wanna find this essence. I wanna have it as as vivid and lively as possible first. And then you know you can always dial it down. I wonder if he could be a little more nonchalant about his hit like we could go I feel like we could go two ways we could keep him angry like that and I think that would be great too to just hold this or it could be more like done this a thousand time times annoying goblin like it could be like that more <laughs> oh god I think I like this this little change in attitude that he's not just staying angry all the time Again, let's take the drumstick from the model sheet, including the swirl. Yeah, the only downside to vector drawing, as you've seen a couple times, when you draw something, the appearance of the line sometimes changes depending on the smoothing settings that you had. Um, And there again, like, it could just be like a tiny drop, like from he's almost right above him and just goes a little bit lower. Or it could really be like 
you know, still having all this, this space for an acceleration. Hmm, I think I, maybe something in between where it's already clearly hovering above his head. could also be like like that I don't know like hammering him down from the top This is difficult to find the exact shape. And you know, for thumbnailing, you could make, for every post, you could make dozens or hundreds of variations to try to find the perfect one. Ah, I think I like that one. Jan says in the thumbnails he also twists his fist. It's more flat when he raises it and then twists on the head like a hammer fist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder how much of a perspective we actually want. I think I like it like this now. And then we just keep kind of like the same squiggle in the middle. <laughs> okay, now for the fun frame. <laughs> We're gonna have the contact. <laughs> yeah, no, Jan, it's cool that you're uh, thinking out loud. I really, I really like uh, reading all your input, guys. It's really cool. I mean, that's why I'm doing this live. So we can talk a little bit about it. Um, I'm always open for suggestions or, you know, if there are any things that you notice. Like someone already caught that we were doing the wrong kind of, the wrong shape of for the teeth in the goblin. That's, that's really cool. I might not have noticed that when I was just, if I would just be working for myself. Yeah, Madhu, you want to do an animation show on your own? Yeah. I think a lot of people who get into animation uh, dream of making their own show. And uh, yeah, it's a good goal to have. Um, it's also really tough to actually achieve it. But yeah, good luck to you. <laughs> keep on animating, keep on practicing until you are where you want to be with this.
Okay, uh, I think for this one it's very uh, important again that we don't move other things too much. Um, because we want the viewer to not look at much else but only the the hand. So keep the rest more or less where it is. I just like try tracing it instead of um, copying it because it gives you these living wobbling lines. Um, Deborah is asking, uh, if you would color this, would you do it frame by frame or color all the pieces one by one? Um, I would probably go piece by piece, just color the body of the orc, go through all the frames, uh, then color the ears of the orc, color all those frames. Uh, like I wouldn't shift uh, colors between between frames i wouldn't color the whole entire picture for example first and then tr color the next entire picture um and there are also depending on where you're doing it i'm not that familiar with the coloring tools in uh open tools but in harmony for example there is um a coloring tool that can color multiple frames um, for example, if you hold the body still like we're doing in this in this frame, we could definitely color those two frames all at once uh, and it would just color through to the next to the next frame. But coloring, that's really an area where I really hope for artificial intelligence or something like that to improve that. <laughs> because, you know, how difficult can it be for a computer to recognize the different shapes between the, the drawings? I mean, it's very difficult, but I feel like there might be a solution for that if you train uh, an AI, AI to, to read animation frames. Uh, it should do a pretty good job. There are also um, approaches where you morph animate a color layer under the strokes. Um, yeah, a bunch of interesting concepts to uh, to save some work. All right, now for the fun part. The fist, I think, should imp impact like right on top of his head. Um, let's make his layer, the goblin layer, a little lighter. And it should be really like in the space where the goblin used to be. I think I do like to invert it a little, going from that curve to a slight up curve. <laughs> and in a way the goblin kind of could already be gone
<laughs> I love how this is already coming together. Hi, Pixmation. All right. I think we are about done with the keys. Now we can go to do the actual timing. Um, thank you, Pixmation. Um, because so far everything is just one frame after another, and if we hit, if we would hit play, it would go far too quickly. So we need to uh, distribute the frames in the timeline. Now I like to really separate those steps and not do that too early because. Uh, as you might have noticed, I like going back and watching what I've already drawn and <laughs> the earlier I have the timing, the more I click on that play button and, you know, sometimes it's good to hit play a lot to see how your animation is coming along and sometimes it can waste time if you watch your animation over and over again. Um, uh, plus, it, timing is one more thing to think about, and I would prefer to just focus on one thing uh, uh, after another. Uh, okay. I mean, the loop is not entirely complete now. So you would go back to the, oh yeah, that's nice. You would go back to the first pose and then the goblin would come back. Maybe the goblin would have like two poses. Um, one would be <clears throat> more like groggy, having been knocked out. Oh, come on. Give me an empty frame here. <clears throat> Off screen. And then a new frame here. Maybe you could blink a couple of times and then look over and then the whole thing can start over again. Okay. Pixmation is asking, can you tell the difference between keys and contact poses? Mm. 
Well, the only instance that I know contact poses is in a walk cycle. Um, is a special kind of keyframe in a walk cycle where uh, when you have a character walking, um, the contact pose is the first pose where it is contacting the ground again. Um, so in a way, the that would be like this. This would, arm would be in front. This would be in the back. Uh, and this is the, the contact. And usually the contact pose is already also a key pose in your walk. Yeah. Um, the other way around, like contact poses are most of the time key poses because they are key information that you absolutely need to have for your animation to read. It's uh, a contact pose is a special kind of key pose. Um, that's probably how I would define it. Um, it's a little, little bit trickier with extremes. Um, and the, the, the definitions are kind of like wobbly. Sometimes uh, a key can be multiple things, you know. All right. Now let's do some timing. One way I how I like to do timing is um, to let the animation play and try to feel out when the next um, impulse, when the next key should come. Uh, this works especially well for those long stairs or, you know, just where we need a moment to see what is happening. Um, so I, I would play this and be like, okay, around here, around the 12 frame mark, um, I will put the next the next key and then we also need some frames for the goblin to react and you would always try to have the uh, drawings on uneven numbers I think we will see a little later why that is okay then he goes into the reaction hmm and then we could shift maybe this should be a little earlier but this should be a little later so we can play again. Until we have something that, you know, reads very well. Now let's put the hit on twos. Maybe that's already all we need. There's also a keyboard a, a shortcut that you can use to make stuff from being on ones to be on twos. So right click reframe.
<laughs> All right. Now here we have the timing to be a little bit samey because after it, the timing was kind of slow, we wanted to be to pick to pick up speed and go really fast. can be a loop. Okay, this is a bit too fast in a couple of places, but good start. Especially here. And after he hit, I feel like it is funnier if that is held for a couple of frames. <clears throat> mm, sometimes forget to mark both layers. Still not enough time for the fist being in the air, uh, up here. I really like that. Really like that moment. shorter but this one longer mm, he's recovering a big too quickly like whatever is happening here some blinking or head shaking needs to be longer we almost got it i think the surprised face this one could be a little longer Okay. Um, I think we can fit in one more hit animation here.
right, this was not how it was, was it? This is the next drawing that he needs to have. The sixes aligned here. All right. I still have to get used to how things copy and paste and they sometimes shift things over. I'm sure this is thought out why stuff is pushing stuff out of the way in certain instances, but I haven't quite gotten behind that yet. Oh. I think there's a fill frames. Fill empty cells. There we go. Hmm. Now I feel like the anticipation could be longer. believe another 40 minutes has passed it's really uh, it's always amazing to me how much time actually passes while animating uh, such a lab laborious process but still worth it <laughs> um, okay I gotta have to make another short break um, and then we're gonna fill in the breakdowns uh, and some more extreme poses in the next segment. See you in a little bit.
and welcome back. Um, all right, now what we have to do next is to think about the moments that need a breakdown. And personally, I I love breakdowns. I think most motions should have a well thought out breakdown. And there's like one trend in modern animation that I really don't understand. Like if you look at, um, actually the, the recent uh, Simpsons seasons have been a bit better in this regard, but you know, even in, in, in stuff like Steven Universe or um, uh, what else is there? Gravity Falls, stuff like that, that has some great animation occasionally in most of the time, they do not use cool breakdowns, which I I don't understand. If you don't know that much about breakdowns is how you get from one point, uh, from one key post to the next key post. Um, sometimes there's a little bit of a wobbly definition of what is a, a breakdown and what is a um, post. Um, and I've been like, I love definitions and stuff, stuff like that. But for the sake of simplifying my life, I have uh, said, okay, it's not that clear where the border is. It's anything that is in the middle of emotion that helps you to really flesh out what happens during the motion. And other than the key poses, where you clearly see like a silhouette and you often you have time to clearly see the key pose because we eased into the pose and then we ease out of it. So, you know, the, the key poses, they stay on screen for longer. The breakdowns are often just poses where the motion goes through and they often pass by too quickly to be really seen but they are still felt. If you do something interesting in the middle of the animation, it, it's gonna change the feeling of it. And that's why I think we really need to think about them in this next step. Um, and the first moment that we have is from this pose to that pose. And just to show you some, can I actually just draw in it? Yes, I can. Um, cool, OpenTunes gets a little more user-friendly in some regards. Let's switch that to be on twos. So there are a lot of different things that we can do with this breakdown to make it more interesting. Now, what you often see in TV shows they just in between it. They just go like, okay, let's go exactly in the middle here between the red and the green line. And that's it. That's our breakdown. But those breakdowns are super boring because they just give your animation like a morphing feeling. Yeah? Like you just float into the next pose. And uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like animation can be so much stronger if you add some something more in the middle. Um, like our monster could actually dip to the left a little bit during the motion. And um, yeah, the mouth could like, oh, 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 it crashed. It crashed the first crash of the night, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, um, that's definitely an improvement uh, considering how much OpenTunes crashed in the previous live streams. Uh, start it again. Yeah, um, OpenTunes, for whatever reason, is a lot more stable when you use uh, bitmap layers. So, but I'm a rebel. I, I would like to keep using vector layers because I just like the options that we have in vector. Um, 
So I'm, I'm gonna keep trying. Uh, yeah, so let's come up with something interesting that could happen in between. I would like to uh, like for him to dip, dip back. Oh, that is too big. What size did we have here? I forgot it again. Oh, wow. Two crashes in a row. And I wasn't even doing the same thing. <laughs> what is happening here? Am I clicking too fast? That is odd. You're my witnesses. It hadn't crashed the past. When did we start? Two or three hours. And now two crashes in a row. Was it at three? 3.5. Hmm. All right, so interesting breakdown. Now we're having more of a dip to the left. Yeah. Uh, what the hell? <laughs> like, hmm. What are we doing different than the times before? We are now. Hmm. The onion skin is different, and the we we are creating a frame where there previously was an exposed frame. But can that really be it? Can that be the problem? <laughs> oh man. Yeah, this is the reason why I can't uh, fully recommend um, open tunes. Um, at least not for vector and I haven't tried the bitmap functions enough to really say. Uh, so I don't know, let's just take out the frame here. I'm gonna step stop explaining for a second uh, to see if it will crash again. Okay, it seems to work better when there was no frame previously. Exposed? Can that really be it? Or maybe it really was the onion skin. I'm so afraid it's going to crash at any moment. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. And, you know, the thing is, you can always say like, oh, well, it's because it's free software, you know, it's open source. And of course, there are a few bucks and stuff like that. Um, but I had projects in Toon Boom Harmony, a software that can cost thousands of dollars if you buy like a permanent license. And sometimes it would also crash just as often, like for whatever reason. There is something with animation software with timelines and vector strokes that makes it kind of uh, sensitive. I'm 
I really don't know what to do now. Okay, let's not put it on twos for now. I mean, what are we doing differently than what we have been doing for the past three hours? So paranoid now. Oh, okay. It has something to do with me undoing, I think. Because I was, most of the time, I was just undoing something and then doing the next stroke. Uh, let's try not to undo. C recess, uh, CW says, this happens to me too when using all vectors. Could it simply be because you have more frames now, more instances of the same frame? Yeah, possible. I mean, we do have a lot more frames. We copied a bunch of them. The thing is, if I hit undo the first time when creating an image, it also undoes the instance on the timeline, right? Like if I, if I make a stroke and I hit undo, it will delete it here again. Maybe it has something to do with that. So let's make a stroke off screen and I'm not going to undo this one. Um, and I'm only going to undo up until we did this stroke. So maybe we're onto something here. Uh, and then maybe we could do like a bug report on the Open Tunes forums or something like that. All right, we have him dipping to the left. And Could be opening just a little bit. As I said, I do like it when teeth kind of stay at the same time. We can't do it for that other teeth. I have to take it out. This really seems to be it. I can now undo however I want. Okay, so, but undoing the creation of this frame causes a problem. That is good to know. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so the red line is the previous um, drawing. The green line is the next one. <clears throat> Down here, everything stays the same. Oh, wow. I can really not stay on a line. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, oh yeah, CW, you were also asking about the 11 second club. Um, oh man, I really don't want to promise anything right now because I really don't know how the next days uh, turn out. But yeah, I, sh I should do that again. I have a lot of fun doing the critiques um, and I really enjoy hanging out with you guys. 
So uh, I should really do it. <laughs> Then it takes it always takes quite some time. I think we haven't done the stream under two hours or something like that. Um, and I I always failed in trying to go a little quicker through them because I really want to do as many as possible. Okay, here we have a little in the breakdown. Now we give an animation for a uh, overlap and follow through um, where the the tip of the ears is still kind of in the same place, um, but the rest of the ears moving back already. <clears throat> Pixmation asks, what is the 11 second clap? Um, the 11 second clap is a monthly competition that you can find uh, on 11 second club dot com it is yeah uh, 11 second club dot com and for each month there is a sound snippet it's often from a movie or from a, a tv series just 11 seconds of sound uh, often it's dialogue sometimes it's only sound effects and everybody is invited to animate whatever they want uh, to this sound clip and then you can submit it to the website and people can vote on it and uh, yeah, the winner gets a uh, critique from one of the great teachers at Animation Mentor. Um, but I thought it was kind of unfair that only the winner gets feedback on, on their animation. I mean, everybody can get feedback. Like while voting, you can write comments about people's uh, animation. There also is a great forum with people that are very helpful. Um, <clears throat> So, um, yeah, it's, it's a really great thing to do if you're trying to improve your animation skills. Now, for the arm down here, um, this breakdown drawing is kind of acting a little bit like an ease out. It's easing out of the the previous position that it was. Um, and you know, while the eye is kind of in the middle of its motion, the arm with the drumstick is just starting the motion with an ease. Stretch the timing a little bit. The breakdown can be in the middle. Taking off one, two frames and adding one, two frames here. And we need another breakdown here. <clears throat> Once again, I would leave, uh, I'm leaving a space here for an in-between. We're gonna do that drawing later. Um, personally, I really like working pose to pose where, I mean, you already noticed that. That's basically how we did the uh, animation. We thought about one important pose after the other and now we're thinking about the less important poses 
Um, and the next lesser important pose is the breakdowns. Now we're gonna do the breakdowns for everything. And then we're gonna have a look if there's still uh, extremes to be done. Extremes are um, anticipations where the character's like preparing a motion or overshoots where the character's going over a position, an end position, and then going back into the position that he actually wanted to stop in. Um, see if there are any of these left. Um, some of our keys are already extremes. When the dude, um, the orc, lifts up the arm, that's an anticipation for the for the hit. Um, <clears throat> but because it's so important for the animation, in this case, it's a key pose. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna continue now and filling in the breakdowns, which might leave some space for extreme poses and in-betweens that we're still gonna do later. <clears throat> oh, you know what we're gonna do first? We're gonna do the, the goblin going from here to there because that is an example for where we really need the uh, the breakdown to make our animation interesting. Okay, once again, <clears throat> I'm doing this stroke so we can undo up till here. All right, in a, a, a lot of TV shows, <laughs> the animators would only go like in the middle, do something like that. And I think there should be a more interesting way to do that, you know? Like this can look okay, just going in the middle. This can look okay. You see? Not bad, but not amazing. Um, and by putting something more interesting here, it can go from okay to amazing. Um, Um, and we can make a little bit of a decision here too. Um, we could, for example, say like the body here is obviously in a breakdown in the middle of the motion, but the arm could already be at an overshoot. Like it already came from all the way up till here, overshot its position and it's already on the way back. So one drawing has to be doesn't have to be the same for every element like for the body this is a breakdown for the arm this is an extreme because the arm is doing an overshoot and then settling back uh does that make sense um i think we can have some fun with the eyebrows here And the arm's going down, kind of like an anticipation before it's gonna go up next. So this is a breakdown for the body, an overshoot extreme for that arm, an anticipation extreme for the other arm. Um, and just that alone, that combination, is gonna make it look more interesting.
And I feel like our timing is a little bit off. This could use some more health frames. But yeah. Uh, check it out, says I'm not being able to play my animation. What should I do? Hmm, hard to say. I mean, if you have frames distributed over the um, timeline, you should just be able to click play. Um, you could check if this triangle is going to all the way of the end of your animation. You can click and drag it uh, to make sure that is the area that you play in. Um, yeah, other than that, I have to, hard to say, tough to say from the distance. What might be wrong here? Pixmation asks if I'm a professional animator. Yes, I am. I, um, well, not in open tunes. <laughs> I usually work in, in harmony or, um, uh, for a long time I make game animation in spine. Um, so yeah, but that's, uh, that's my profession. That's how I earned most of a mon my money for a while. I forgot the line of the other arm here. All right. I always time to slow. Ah, I love this dip down. I love this. Here is our next breakdown possibility. Let's save just in case it's gonna crash again. Now this breakdown I want to have a little more subtle. Um, I think it could be quite cool if now his eyes are leading the motion like the head is kind of like dragging forward, dragging the rest of the body forward. And that's hard to do. He doesn't have a clear line between the the head and the body. So I'm, I don't know if I can achieve the effect that I am looking for. And his facial features are pushing the body forward. Now what to do with the mouth? Again, the ears are lagging behind. Okay, uh, here I wonder if that would be too much, but I could extend his, um, like here that his upper arm already kind of reached the end position, but his, his lower arm is still coming up. 
already made to a fist. Okay, this is an adventurous one. I'm not sure this is gonna work. No. This just looks like a morphing mess. <laughs> Yeesh. Nope. Oh, 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 I'm undoing stuff. I need to stop before undoing this one. And you know, this is the danger with onion skinning. Sometimes onion skinning is inviting you to just do kind of weird morphs. Um, and sometimes it's just better to, instead of using onion skinning, just flip back and forth. Especially if you haven't done timing yet. Um, let's do onion skinning for the base so we know that this is at the same space. But then a lot of animators like to just look at the previous frame, draw something in it, and just feel it out. And this way you get a very lively, a very vivid animation. Let's see how that looks. <laughs> Actually not too bad. There's a bit too much happening with the left arm. <laughs> uh, that one. All right. I'm realizing how my focus is kind of um, getting worse. Uh, <laughs> But maybe we could talk about a couple more things. Like if you have any more questions or uh, I don't know, maybe some uh, some cool things from Christmas. What, what uh, animation Christmas movies did you guys watch? Did you get any animation related presents for Christmas? Uh, I think we could talk maybe a little more yeah I think I do like that that the fist is not so visible Natty 23 didn't get any Christmas related uh, animation related presents this year ah <laughs> I think I'm gonna uh, fulfill myself a Christmas wish a little later. I'm, I'm gonna get um, for my laptop for on the go. I always wanted to have uh, not just a drawing tablet, but one of those small portable displays. Um, so if I'm, well, I mean, currently because of COVID, there's not much traveling, but uh, I, I do enjoy working on the road when I uh, go to teaching, uh, teaching jobs. And I was always kind of frustrated that I couldn't draw perfectly in class. So I think I'm gonna get myself a, a little drawing display. 
And I'm thinking I'm looking at the options from XP Pen because Wacom displays are just so expensive. Oh, CW got a, a the Nine Old Men book. Yeah, the Nine Old Men, the, the legends from Disney, they have a lot of cool stuff to say. Uh, I still have a um, an interview from the FMX that I didn't cut. Uh, I really need to do that. I really need to edit that interview. It's with John Kane Maker, uh, animation historian. Um, and he knew the nine old men personally, <laughs> stuff like that. And he, he was uh, in the interview just talking about what he learned from the nine old men. And it was just so cool to listen to him. I really need to get that interview done. Ugh. It's unbelievable that I didn't didn't get around to cut it yet, but I, I will. Um, it's really cool what at the Disney Studios, the, the stuff that they figured out about animation um, and how they took it from being an art of intuition to, yeah, figuring out the rules behind that. Really interesting time period. All right. Um, We have still need a transition from here to there. I think again, I'm going to use the breakdown as an ease for the hand. The hand is almost at the parking position. Yeah, Pixmation, the Animator Survival Kit is a real uh, a real good book to get you started. Um, and it, it really, um, like the, the stuff that is described in the Animator Survival Kit, if you really do it that diligently, um, you will adopt a very good uh, Workflow, thinking about your animation step by step. It's really good. Really good resource. <clears throat> My mentor, <laughs> he didn't like the Animator Survival Kit that much because um, he, what would happen is that a lot of students, they do the walk cycles and the stuff that are described in the Animator Survival Kit they would do those exactly as they are described. And then you would have a class full of students who would all do the exact same walk cycle. And for him, this was not the goal of animation. You know, for him, it's also a lot about finding the individual personality and stuff like that. I'm sure for, for Richard Williams, who wrote that book, uh, it's a big priority too to find unique ways for unique personalities to move but um, and he encourages in the animator survival kit he always encourages people like to try different things maybe instead of having the hip dip upwards have it dip downwards and stuff like that he is encouraging experimentation but uh, it might be true that a lot of readers are not um, 
are not experimenting as much as they probably should. So... It is a really good book, but, you know, to, to really get really good at animation, I think it's a good idea to, um, to also come up with your own ways to do things. Um, yeah, not just copy what it says in the Animator Survival Kit. It's a good mixture of both, you know, learning from what has already been done, but also finding a way to uh, advance and push animation into new directions. <clears throat> hmm. This is becoming a very boring breakdown so far. But I think that's good. So it's just like a little like, oh, just closing the mouth slightly. Again, we're doing a little lag behind on the ears. Yeah, Taikenzor says, don't forget to save as you go. Yeah, I definitely have to save now. <laughs> uh, I have autosave also activated, which in open tunes, as we saw, <laughs> is really helpful. Um, so it's already saving all every five minutes, but yeah, um, I will also try to save after every important drawing or after a drawing is done. Oh, I really like that one. I really like that that breakdown is a little bit weaker. Um, that he's just closing his mouth. Okay, and maybe the switch to from this expression to that expression, um, that can be a little faster. Yeah, like that. And all the rest stays the same. Uh, maybe. Let's 
do the teeth first because it's going to be the thing that oh 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 good that we saved <laughs> oh man open tunes one more undo than i should have done but yeah that really seems to be the bug Yeah. So we make a stroke. We only undo up to this point, and then we should be fine. Exactly, Taken Sore. That's why we save. The brow is already coming down a lot. You know, it's little decisions like this. If during the breakdown, the drawing already has the dip in the eyebrow and stuff like that can really make your drawing feel differently. Um, So those drawings are just all the same. Uh, those lines are all the same. But to keep that human touch, we're just gonna redraw on top. I haven't watched my favorite Christmas movie this year uh, yet, or animated Christmas movie at least. It's Arthur Christmas. It's a really cool Christmas movie done by um, Artman. They made a 3D film and it's one of my favorite Christmas movies. It's about... Uh, um, the junior of the family um, actually caring more about Christmas than, you know, the, the Santa that is currently doing it. And then there's the older brother who is like turning Christmas into a high tech op operation. They bring the gifts with like a big spaceship and they have uh, elves breaking into the houses and uh, in like a, a secret agent style delivering all the gifts and that's just such a cool sequence um, and so much fun but it's a kind of an unknown movie people usually don't know that one and I absolutely love it author Christmas is that Let's see how that looks Hum. Hum. Why am I screwing up the timing so badly today? This one needs to be held longer.
Yeah, that's coming together quite nicely. <laughs> okay, we have another interesting breakdown here when he's from shifting to from this one to this one, we really need to think about how he is lifting the hand. Um, and for this, maybe we make a breakdown that goes a little further back than we usually go um because there are so many different options to do this uh it could be just coming from inside his silhouette be like guided through him like that or we could say like okay we want to be in this level as as quickly as possible outside of his silhouette um I think I kind of like having a a little bit of a shape coming out early. Maybe something like that. Yeah, I think that could be nice. And then of course, you know, instead of just in betweening the body from the two different lines, it could just really dip down during that one. And of course it would show that in the mouth as well. Maybe like that. I love doing <laughs> those those playbacks of unfinished drawings. <laughs> I I try to not do that as much, uh, but sometimes I I like just doing the most important parts of a drawing, like the um, the arm is really important for this breakdown, and then I would kind of just stop and go to the next breakdown because I feel like, okay, I've done the most important part of this drawing. Um, but of course it would be good to see how the animation is coming along. Hi, Rohan Gaming. Uh, once again, we have the ears just doing a follow through thing, dipping down, pointing in the direction that they were coming from. Maybe a curve for this ear. Let's, sh let's see how that looks. Um, now for the meat stick the drumstick we could maybe just dip it down and 
again I copied that so I can just take it and lower it a bit I think this is not quite right. This has to be more like this. Aren't breakdowns fun? <laughs> they just the motion held in the middle of the air. Oh, the line at the bottom is missing. And after we've done that, we probably, hopefully, have another nice nice breakdown. Yeah, I like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like that. I, f I feel like I can almost hear them. Like, <laughs> and especially that impact, something about him just vanishing after the impact makes it so. S s yeah, like ha having a lot of impact. So forceful. <laughs> <laughs> mm, a couple of comments in the chat. Um, thank you, Rohan. I'm glad that you like uh, my videos. Uh, Filippo says, are you using X sheets? Well, I mean, I'm using the timesheet in the X sheet mode. Um, I have not used the X sheet so far to make like any notes or something like that. Um, Tykensor asks, uh, should the arm come down a bit more? I was wondering if the elbow would curve more downward than being bent upward. Yeah, um, I have the bent upward only because it was fun at the time for the to have the impact while we're doing the just the key poses. I think after he hit, um, he's definitely gonna, um, the arm's definitely gonna settle and relax a bit. Um, I mean, we can do that right now. Maybe it would even be like an overshoot and then come back up again. But yeah, let's, I mean, let's do that real quick. You know what, guys? Let's actually copy frames now. Copy lines from one frame to another. Um, and then have like a more relaxed state. That works a little bit like an overshoot. Because, you know, it must be comfortable for him to hold the arm there anyway, so. Ah, damn it. Those swirls are sometimes so much harder if you just want to have like a abstract kind of cool thing going on but sometimes the abstract stuff is even more difficult than keeping it realistic or putting in a lot of detail 
Um, so maybe. Yeah, I know that was too much. Uh, where is it? There. Yeah, it now takes some of the um, power out of it because we don't see the the goblin going down. But I think if we have the goblin impact, um, it's going to work. I do kind of like that it is held at, at exactly the same spot, kinda. Only the elbow settles down a little. That's kind of cool. All right, now we have the in between of the orc just going back to uh, his meal. Again, we are in danger of crashing, so that's why I made the stroke here. Um, yeah, so the most important thing for this breakdown, I think the body is kind of like actually a middle breakdown because I don't want uh, I don't want to dip the body down heavily up or down. Um, I think we we don't need that that much going on in this breakdown but an interesting area is how we're going to take back the arm like do we going to do like a tuck away thing that he's like taking it over there or is he kind of just just letting it flop down i think that's the one that i how i would do that um He's just letting it flop down. Hey, uh, Gaurav from India. Uh, I'm from Germany. It's currently 6 p.m. here in Germany. In India, it's a bit later, isn't it? Maybe like this. Hmm. I think I like this one the most, where it's just kind of going sideways. And a uh, turn like this is always makes always sense for a blink. And of course now he's happier again, so it's a little bit of a happy blink. And once again, we're doing kind of like a follow through by keeping the tips of the ear where they are and putting 
Just having a motion at the base. Now, what have we here? All right. I needed to think for a moment, like, wait, are the red lines the past lines? The green lines the future ones? Yeah, that's how it is. Oh my god. I am working on this for too long now. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, Rajesh, R Rajesh, the uh, characters do not have names yet. Actually, they should. Um, so I feel like it needs to be like super boring, generic, generic American names like Kyle and Steve or something like that. Uh, or, or like maybe just something silly, maybe like Boingo and Warks or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> we definitely need to, to, to name them. <laughs> All right. So yeah, no exciting breakdown here. We just kind of keep it the same. Again, I'm tracing uh, lines from how I want the volumes to be at the end, but I'm gonna take them and move them to where I think it's more interesting. Have a little bit of a dip up. And there we go. Hmm. Last line down here. doing something like that with the arm. I'm not content with the arm motion here yet, but do you see how it can make such a big difference if we just, you know, let it flop down like that? Or if we have it come down in an arc. That feels so different. I did kind of like that. <laughs> uh, someone asked about my age. <laughs> well, I'm 31 um, now, just in November. Um, when did I start to animate? Well, I was always interested in animation, uh, even way before I studied it. Um, so I don't know. I started studying in 2009 and that was kind of the point where it was clear that I, I would do that f or I wanted to do that for a living. Um, so, yeah, over 10 years now. And I've been drawing all my life, like, 
uh, as a kid, I, I would always draw a lot with my brother. So, yeah. But I think I made my first animation. Uh, probably when I was like 16 or 17. And I know it was a really early version of Blender. Like uh, a lot of it I actually did in 3D. Uh, I started with, with Blender when it was, oh, that was ages ago when like the game engine came out and stuff like that. And uh, my first experience with 2D animation was Flash. Oh, you're 16 now. Um, yeah, that's a good time to start. <laughs> the cool thing about when you're still going to school, when you're still learning, um, you don't know that yet, but you know, once you have a job, even if it is a creative job, uh, you will do very little projects just for fun. And while you're still in school, um, it's really cool because you come home after school, you do your schoolwork, and then you have time to do what you want. I mean, you know, sometimes uh, there might be other stuff to do, but I feel like, oh man, the time that we had as students or as, as, as pupils, um, you never in your life you have that much time again. <laughs> It only goes more stressful from here on. So really draw and paint and animate and do everything that is fun to you um, as much as you can. Uh, because these years are really good for just doing, yeah, fun stuff and experimenting and see what kind of things you like to do. Um, and then even if you choose to study animation, that's also uh, one more opportunity to to really explore what you would like to do. All right, I think this is the as far as we're gonna get today. But yeah, I'm I'm kind of happy with it. I really wanted to have the contrast of the the boxing of the little girl, uh, the little little goblin that it feels like almost nothing. And then that big impact that completely immediately throws him down to the ground. I really like that we have that con uh, that contrast in there. Yeah. All right. Okay, so um, thank you guys very much for being here and for all your wonderful comments. I had a lot of fun working with you on this little animation. Um, yeah, we might do another live stream to get this done. Um, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be part of one of my uh, classes. Um, if you haven't seen them yet, I have uh, a 2D animation class. Uh, you can find it under animatorisland.com slash 2D. Um, it only has a handful of lessons so far, but uh, yeah, I hope to, to grow it more and more to be a complete 2D animation class. And, um, oh, looks like my cat is coming to visit us. Hey, Rainbow. Say hello to the people. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, uh, and this will be one exercise that I will have more information on and more theory. Um, Miss B, <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, you're making 
the last few minutes of this live stream adorable. Okay, um, so I had a lot of fun doing this with you guys and I hope to see you around again. Please subscribe and ring the bell so you always know when there's a new live stream. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, you can also always bring them to the live stream. And I heard you, I heard that you want more animation critiques uh, and I will try to figure out a way how I can do this. Um, now, where's my chat? I don't see your chat anymore. All right. Uh, have a fantastic evening. Keep on animating. Do your animation pro project. If you have ideas, just get started. And uh, yeah, hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.